I'm Travella Foster, and Chris Bishop asked me to make a little story about getting through tough times, and I thought a long time before I really wanted to say yes. And I kept going off on the wrong track, thinking, tough times? Well, I've never really had horribly tough, tough times, just normal things. So I started thinking about it, and I wrote a, a script, and it was totally off subject. So I wrote another script when I focused on what I was supposed to be talking about. And then I realized, sure enough, there have been tough times. So uh, part of this room is, uh, there's my life story in photo albums. And if you look carefully, you can see that they are under the arms of the cross, which was built into this house, which is pretty cool. So that's part of the story. And then I started looking at the pictures on the wall. And over there, you can see my mother and three kids. And the little one was me. Not a big deal. I was about three in that picture, I think. And, you know, typical three-year-old, I was just having fun in life. And then our house burned to the ground. So I thought, wow. There's the first major setback. Well, that was in the early 40s. And it also meant that shortly thereafter, my dad went into the army. And mother, with three children, as you can see in the pictures, was expecting baby number four. So while he was still at camp here in, in this country, she gave birth to baby number four and five because no one expected twins. So he was able to come home for two days, get her out of the hospital, and then leave again. So here she is living in this apartment or wherever the neighbors would allow her to live because we just had the house burn. Uh, so. She got through it all. He comes home with uh, a year later, the kids are now walking, and how she got through that year, I don't know, but she did. So my father came home with malaria, which he still has, but then two more kids were born. So now we have seven. So this started making sense. Mother was the key. So I wrote the story, Actually, I've written the story lots of times because there it is in the album, the whole story of World War II, uh, my mother's stories, and so on. Anyway, to make this story hopefully understandable, I wrote it, try to make it succinct, but I've asked my daughter to be the narrator. Getting through tough times. In my early years as the middle child in a family of seven, I had plenty of opportunities to practice the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This has been the basis of my life. As a teenager, the influence of family and church was my saving grace. With two older brothers acting as my protectors and parents who were supportive of the many activities I was involved in, I was provided the confidence to move forward and try many new things. My attendance in Sunday school and Methodist Youth Fellowship was critical as my teenage mind processed who and what I wanted to be in life. Janie Dellinger, our Sunday school teacher, had a remarkable way of getting us to talk about how the various scriptures should influence our lives. The scripture that stuck with me is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is sacred, and you are that temple. This encouraged me to believe that my body and soul were God's temple, and that it was my responsibility to take care of them. This also kept me from trying many of the vices with which some of my classmates were experimenting. However, interpreting many other scriptures were more difficult for me to understand. So I continued to attend church and small groups within the church to listen and try to apply Jesus' teachings to my daily life. Married life, however, didn't always go as I planned and presented many challenges. Some I handled well and others not so much. Finishing college, being a wife and mother, 
buying homes, going for advanced degrees, teaching, attending churches, etc. may seem like the American dream. However, it all became overwhelming and divorce followed. Life was even more challenging as a single parent, especially when I thought I could do it alone and stopped attending church. Operating my own business, sharing parental responsibilities, attending grad school, and attempting a social life became overwhelming. One night, I literally cried out to the Lord that I needed His help. Spending many hours with Him, I refocused my mind and my heart. The following weeks and months saw rapid changes as once again I knew I was on the right track. I let go of trying to control all of these things and let Jesus have the lead. Old scriptures that I had turned off were coming to mind. The popular Christian question, WWJD, what would Jesus do, became a go-to in many daily situations. Realizing that Jesus had never left me and that I was the one who left him was a bittersweet moment. Jesus was the only person who was and is always with me no matter what. Looking back from today's vantage point, I know it was the best decision I ever made. He has been beside me through it all. Years later, as life goes on, life presented me with some sad situations where relying on Jesus became much harder. Sickness and death comes to all of us, and we all must experience the sudden or not so sudden loss of those dear to us. As a four-year-old child, the first burial I remember attending was that of Ralph Chapman, who was killed in World War II. I can never forget the physical resonance of a 21-gun salute. Next was the funeral of my nine-year-old cousin who was killed in a tragic accident. Mother insisted that I attend the viewing and funeral to realize that dying was part of living. In her faith, she was preparing me with a view into a whole life with death as part of that life. As a 16-year-old, I lost my favorite uncle and my grandmother two months apart, but was better able to accept these events with the faith my mother taught me. The death of parents and siblings are always difficult, but they are all steps in the path. A few years ago, my husband Don became sick with what would be a terminal illness. Through his illness, he kept a journal and began each day with God is with me as his guiding thought. In Don's last months, his word to live by was thankful. Even though plans were made well in advance of his death, the loss became more real to me in the days and weeks that followed as the realization of the outcome sank in. God gave me the strength I needed to walk those steps and the support that I needed to both grieve the loss and celebrate Don's life. Two months later, my youngest brother Connie died after what seemed to us a short illness. His siblings and family didn't know how bad he'd been feeling as he never complained. And so we had very little time to prepare ourselves emotionally for his death just 18 days later. Connie, on the other hand, had prepared for years and he gave his best sermon to his twin and me two days before he breathed his last. His message to us, and now to you, was, tell everyone that Jesus is the way. Indeed, Jesus is within us, beside us, and over us. Rely on him as you continue to do your part in the earthly life that he gave you. Yes, this time was hard, and I grieved for both my husband and my brother. But each of them was prepared through faith and prayer and left us knowing that we will be together again in God's kingdom. They were both prepared and at peace in their faith, and they lived that faith to its next step, confident and unafraid. What great examples. The best advice for getting through the tough times I have found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. It does not say that life will be easy. However, sharing the yoke with Jesus will make it easier.